hired uh, by the owner as a, as a monitor and they have to sign off as a witness to the inspection. So that is done annually. And that was done three weeks ago. <laughs> Funny because they were here yesterday and I got stuck in the elevator about 45 minutes ago. There is, uh, right now, we're, because of the tragedy, we are going through an extensive review of the, uh, all of the elevators. And there's, a t there's another test that needs to be done every five years at the property. The last one was done in 2011. That one you do in conjunction with DOB. And that is scheduled to be done in 2016. Because of this tragedy, we're going to accelerate that. We're working with DOB now to have that test done. It's called a five-year load test. A category five, correct? That's going to be done. And we're going to do that within the next few weeks. And so again, we're going to need to shut down the elevators in various ways in order to do this test. Will you make those independent audits public? Pardon? Will you make those supposedly independent audits public? I will ask the owner if they'll do that. Okay, so the cabs, you have posted that only seven people are allowed in the cab. I'm not good at math, but if everybody, if seven it's people- It's not realistic to consider seven people. If, if, I'm gonna, if, if, two, if, Seven people are in the cab, let's say hypothetically speaking, they weigh 200 pounds each, would be what, 1,200 people, 1,200 people, 1,400 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 people, because of the tragedy on New Year's Eve, um, DOB has been all over the building doing an investigation, and doing, a, and they're going to issue a report, which the council member has said that she's fully aware of what's going on in her office. On top of DOB, we are fully cooperating with DOB and, and everybody else that's involved. In this. You ready? So it was, and correct me if I'm wrong, it was DOB that has said, we want you to post eight people to an elevator. Until we do, now we are working with DOB to do this new load test. And so until then, I think it's a good idea, and certainly DOB thinks it's a good idea, to limit the number of people on each elevator until those tests are done. Sir, the main, the main thing I want to know is what kind of training do these guys that are working on the elevators receive? Yep. That's the main question. Yes. Do they go to school like the guys at Otis and Schindler? Yes. Or no? They just get thrown no, out cannot, there? I cannot speak for the uh, elevator. I can only tell you this. The elevator company is fully licensed. There's no such thing as an elevator license. The company is There's called, no such thing. The company is called that doesn't exist North in American, New York. North American Elevator, they are... We have a full service contract, maintenance contract. They come to the property monthly. What about and the individuals, have, the guys turning the wrenches? That's who counts. They don't wear uniforms. They don't even have uniforms. That's, a, that's another thing. The company that's been working and has been working on the elevators on all three buildings, I made a complaint several times, have no identification. No, no uniforms. No uniforms. They can be... Joe, Harry, and Mo. How do we know they are? We don't know if they're professional. Is it the supers? The super too. He's coming the with a scoop and opened up. Oh my the God. The elevator. And my mother is talking in there. Yep. The supers help them? They're not trained. Hey, they're on my floor right now trying to fix the elevator, which I the got. The supers stuck fix on. an elevator? Yeah, that's that, crazy. That point, no, nobody sees it. The uniforms, you are absolutely right. We're going, to, we are going to be meeting with the elevator company to deal with that issue to make sure that they have IDs and that they have uniforms. But Who's what school do they go to? Can I interrupt for a moment? What school? Tony. What training? Tony. I can't answer that. Because there is none. I cannot, I cannot Tony, answer. I gotta interrupt you. They're stuck in the elevator. They're stuck in the elevator, Tony. Okay. Help them out. His name is Frank Spartano. 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 He's the president of Parkline Elevator yes. Inspection. Yes. So he would like to say something. All right. I've been 
the elevator business for 35 years. <coughs> when they did the elevator, come on. There's a simple component. Did they change on top of the elevator care? Did they change the operator? Yes or no? I can't answer that. I don't know. <laughs> they don't even know. Okay. They don't know? Uh, okay. That's scary. That's scary. Okay, wait, wait, wait. We're going to make a point. We're going to make a point. In the track of an operator is a $10 item called the door restrictor. The door restrictor, and I've been on this for many years. I'm trying to get this passed for the city of New York qualified. Most elevator guys are not qualified. They don't even know what a door restrictor is. <laughs> this $10 item that I've been trying to get passed through, okay. I want to go, I just want to track back something. The door restrictor, how it, how it operates, when that door moves, when your elevator moves, if it moves on top of the car, now one more question, they, they performed the modernization, did they install a rope on the 2003 code? My understanding is yes. Okay, now, the rope ripper works within three feet. I'm a six foot two guy. The opening is 84 inches. Usually that rope ripper, when the elevator travels, travels between two and three feet. And the rope ripper works into action. So it doesn't prevent somebody from getting crushed. Just stop the elevator from going any further. There's a $10 item on top of the door, the car door. You mentioned the elevator care. It's called a door restrictor. $10. Was that installed? If I go out and look at it with that elevator guy, he'll tell me right now, and I'll tell you right now, there's a door restrictor on top. And what does a door restrictor do? The door restrictor does what it does. If that elevator starts to drift, the moment it starts to drift, past five inches, four inches, the inside car door cannot open up. I read the person was coming out, and the person got crushed. Now, if you're in an elevator, you see that door open, it tells you there's no door restrictor. Or there is a door restrictor. Most elevator guys who are unqualified to perform their maintenance, to drop the elevators down, they turn the door restrictors around so they can work from outside the car. They can drop the elevator. You're supposed to work from the boat, from the motor room. Now, if that door restrictor is turning around, turning the opposite way, when that elevator starts to drift, and that, and that door opens, that tells me two things. There's either no door restrictor on there, on, on, on the elevator track, or it was turning around. That's it. That's the bottom line. $10 piece of equipment. All right. All right. We're going to give John an opportunity. Okay. This is the first time in 43 years I live here, I've seen a sign like this. They only turned up. Last night. Okay. The request of the building department okay, so because they were exhibiting an abundance of fortune as well they should given the circumstances. But shouldn't they have taken that same procedure doing their in, um, inspections on a regular basis to take that same? I understand. I understand. But you have to be here to get this stand up. You're saying that the buildings are inspected on a regular basis by the that by no, no, DOB. Okay. Say, yeah. How often do they get inspected? Okay. DOB only is involved in the that. five year <laughs> test. The annual test are done in our case here at Grand Street. We require the grant the, the elevator.